welcome to one more topic of um, diagnostics and what we are doing is physical diagnostics and once we are going to finish this physical diagnosis what we are going to do is we are going to go on lab diagnosis and uh, these next four lectures are uh, like the cuff diarrhea loss of consciousness vertigo and join this you know we are going to finish all the topics of uh, <coughs> Uh, physical diagnosis because all the examinations are already done I am um, including one lecture about uh, how to examine the joints and then of course uh, we are going to move on lab diagnosis so let's talk about diarrhea uh, now what you will find is a lot of definitions or different definitions everywhere about diarrhea because uh, it's quite hard to um, define diarrhea um, <clears throat> so you can see one definition is written in front of you and almost uh, all the definitions somehow uh, describe or um, try to say like when the stool frequency is increased or the stool volume is increased uh, so the frequency or the volume is increased and the consistency is decreased we call it as diarrhea or uh, many of the gastroenterologists they define diarrhea as the passage of more than 200 grams of stool daily okay uh, but the thing is again sometimes you know it doesn't fit in many of the places so a very important uh, di definition or easy definition about diarrhea is uh, it can be defined as tools that are looser okay or the consistency is decreased or frequent than normal around more than three times per day and the 12 hours tool weight is more than 200 gram but of course like it's less useful clinically because you no know, one practically weigh the stool by the way okay like no one will come to the doctor and say that I have stool more than 200 grams okay so uh, that of course like this thing makes this definition less clinically useful so simply everyone have his own bowel habits okay so everyone have his own bowel habits so whenever the frequency as well as uh, the frequency is increased of the stool okay and as well as the volume is also increased and the consistency is decreased we we call it as uh, diarrhea right um, now, <laughs> like if the definition is done, then uh, there is like how we classify diarrhea is it could be acute and could, it could be it could be chronic. Okay, so of course, like any any diarrhea which is less than two weeks is called as um, acute diarrhea, right? So we can we can add over here this point less than two weeks time. Okay. Uh, is acute diarrhea whereas chronic diarrhea again uh, there is uh, a lot of different definitions of when to say the diarrhea is chronic or not but uh, uh, one of a very easy thing is like it is when it is for more than two months and but many of the books you know uh, again they mention they change it to few more thing like uh, for more than four weeks okay which is one month so both are correct and you know the one which is in the middle can be called a subacute so uh, so simply like remember less than two week is acute diarrhea and more than four week is chronic diarrhea and what is it between we can say it as subacute right so how we cl can classify diarrhea now the classification so what of the classification is in front of you right it is acute versus chronic 
uh, <clears throat> one classification can be uh, small volume versus large volume. Again, not useful clinically. Uh, one of the classification we can do is watery uh, for what should idea especially is like secretory versus osmotic uh, so this is very interesting by the way if you want to check like either the person have a secretory diarrhea or either the person have osmotic diarrhea okay so what we can do we can ask the patient to fast fasting okay like they are not allowed to eat or take anything if after fasting, if the diarrhea is persisting, the diarrhea is still there, so it means it's a secretory type, type of diarrhea. But if the diarrhea is stopping after fasting, so it means like there is osmotic type of diarrhea. Okay. So one of the classification of the diarrhea can be inflammatory versus non-inflammatory. Okay. So. What are the causes of diarrhea? Remember, like there are many uh, conditions which can cause diarrhea. Intestinal condition, disease can be give can can cause. Poisoning can cause. Systemic infections can cause, and there are, are, are other etiologies as well. Um, but I think like uh, <clears throat> I can I can give you a, a easy what you can say. Um, type of causes like which will which will be easy to remember um, diarrhea basically can be caused by multiple conditions okay and when we it comes to the acute diarrhea remember the causes most of the time can be infection okay so the causes could be infections inflammations it could be osmotic, it could be secretory, okay. So, um, and malabsorptive or malabsorptions, okay. Like all these things can cause diarrhea, right? So, infection, of course, like very, very, very common cause of diarrhea is infections, like. Uh, uh, whenever, of, whenever of course like there is infection so the patient they present with uh, what you can say <clears throat> uh, the infection can be viral can be bacterial okay and inflammations again there are different type of inflammation which can occur for example um, like I'm talking about inflammations other than infections uh, for example IBDs uh, in, uh, inflammatory bowel diseases okay IBDs inflammatory bowel diseases so like uh, Crohn diseases there like ulcerative colitis there of course like they can cause chronic they, they are the cause of chronic diarrhea but when we are talking about cause of diarrhea so of course like we are going to include that as well uh, Osmotic causes are also there. So in osmotic causes, uh, there could be uh, many things like uh, um, what you can say, um, lactose intolerance and things like this. Okay, and then there is um, secretory diarrhea as, as well, and then there is malabsorptions like celiac uh, celiac disease is one of the example. There could be mild bile salt malabsorption. There could be bacterial overgrowth. Uh, and uh, remember, there are other causes as well. So in the others, I would like to mention many causes like uh, uh, hypothyroidism. Oh, sorry, hyperthyroidism can cause diarrhea. Uh, drugs can cause diarrhea, like antibiotics can cause diarrhea. Uh, Propranolol. Or beta blockers can cause diarrhea. Lexatives can cause diarrhea. Okay, so uh, there are like uh, other causes of diarrhea, diarrhea as well. So of course, like 
it have a lot of causes infections inflammation osmotic secretory secretory malabsorption as well as well as others so uh, again like the second type is chronic diarrhea and that for the chronic diarrhea uh, there are many causes like stomach disorders intestinal infections when it comes to the infections you know the causes of chronic diarrhea the infectious causes of chronic diarrhea are basically infections like uh, giardia lamblia or uh, antamoeba histolytica okay so uh, or mebss as well as uh, giardiasis okay so these can cause infections so uh, there is uh, uh, many non infectious intestinal diseases tumors pancreatic diseases hepatobiliary diseases as well as systemic causes can be there like i told you hyperthyroidism uremia drugs and irritable bowel syndrome is also the cause of chronic diarrhea in which basically there is no abnormality all the labs are also fine but still the patients they have diarrhea alternated with constipation okay so i am sure like you know at this time maybe you are finding it hard to and that's why like i'm trying to keep it simple for you guys because you you haven't started your internal medicine yet and now if i will talk about all these things you know irritable bowel syndrome or all these things so of course you won't understand so there is no point of discussing them here of course when you will study them in internal medicine you 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 would have better idea what what is this about right but of course like uh i am focusing more on um how we can see that that it, it, it's an infection how to take history um uh, how to uh what you can say differentiate between different causes okay and what are the things which we uh, must cover when uh, we are going for examination for example for diarrhea right so uh <laughs> now um Uh, if you if you know the causes of diarrhea uh, so we are going to move on okay uh, the pathophysiology is also given in the in the slide okay so uh, now if you can see over here the secretory diarrhea means that that there is an increase in the active secretion i told you uh, like whenever there is secretory diarrhea so what we do like uh, to differentiate between either it's a secretory diarrhea or osmotic diarrhea what what we can do is uh, we can ask the patient to fast or fasting can, can differentiate between these two and after fasting if still a uh, diarrhea is there so of course like um uh, what you can say it means it is some sort of secretory diarrhea uh, uh you can see over here cholera toxin Uh, they they are giving the example of cholera toxin that stimulates the secretion of anions especially chlorinine so what no matter like you the patient is taking anything or not like still the secretion will be going on and the patient will present with diarrhea um, so digestive dysfunctional diarrhea again uh, what you can say chronic pancreatic pancreatitis chronic atrophic gastritis and all the things can cause and osmotic diarrhea what is that um for example um someone uh, who is taking like here you can see the example of laxatives they are giving so uh, what the laxatives do like uh, and if you know what is the process of osmosis that the water molecules they uh, go or pass through a semi permeable membrane from a uh, area of uh, lesser concentration to the area of higher concentration so for example if there is something uh, some molecules or anything in the gut which is concentrated of course the water from the blood or from the gut is going to come to that thing okay to make it uh, less concentrated okay so uh, the the same th- rule applies for example in laxatives like it draws more and more water in, into the gut and that's why it is used to treat constipation okay 
because it makes the stools more watery. Okay, and a very good example of os osmotic diarrhea is the people who have lactase deficiency. There are many people who don't have lactase enzyme, which is which should be there to digest the milk. And when there is no lactase enzyme, what happens is um, simply uh, there is lactose sugar in the gut, and due to that lactose, which cannot be absorbed, more and water, more and more water will is going to draw, or is going to stay, not even draw, like rather stay as well, whatever you have taken in the food as well, in the gut, and it is going to lead to diarrhea, which is called as osmotic diarrhea. And there is one more dynamic diarrhea again, like hyperactive peristalsis is there, like the peristalsis is going at greater rate than the normal. For example, hyperthyroidism is one of the cause of that. In hyperthyroidism, uh, there is an increase in the basal metabolic rate of the body. And when the basal metabolic rate of the body is increased, of course, like everything will become hyper, like uh, tachycardia will be there, hyperthermia will be there. So even the peristalsis will become hyperactive. And when the peristalsis will become hyperactive, simply uh, what is going to happen is uh, like the transit of the things will be fast, fast and fast. So whatever the people will take, of course, like they are going to transit quickly through the, uh, what you can say, uh, through the GIT and it can, it can lead to diarrhea called as dynamic diarrhea. And malabsorption, uh, again, there are many conditions like celiac disease, I told you, uh, cystic fibrosis and... Uh, uh, Whipple's disease and there are many other diseases uh, when the, the the intestinal mucosa cannot absorb the things and of course like it will lead to malabsorption so when there is malabsorption of course the the things are going to stay inside the intestines and again the same thing which I explained you uh, will give you will give like bulkier or like more stools uh, for example uh, uh, some of the people who cannot digest uh, fats, you know, and I always give the name of the drug because I have a personal experience of you like using that drug. Uh, the, the name of the drug is or Orlistat. So many people they use that drug to lose weight. So what that drug do? Um, it don't let the fats uh, to be absorbed in the body, like uh, by the by the body. So they stay, they stay inside your gut, you know, the fats. And when, when the person, they, they, they pass stools, you know, their stools are very, very greasy because all the fats, they stay inside the stools. And uh, the patients who have these kind of malabsorption syndrome, for example, uh, the bile acid is uh, not there. You know, bile, bile salts, they are the one which help to emulsify the fats. So what happens in some of the time, like uh, some of the people there, uh, they don't have enough piled acids, okay. So what happens is like uh, they cannot digest fats. So when they cannot digest fats, the fats stay inside the gut and uh, <clears throat> simply um, they, they, their stool size is bigger when they, uh, when they pass stool, they are... Uh, the, the exact complaint you know what they make to the doctor is simply they say like we had bulkier stools difficult to flush stools like uh, the, the the stools basically float in the water and when they flush it like they keep, keep on floating and if the stool they they go onto the side of the toilet you know they, they leave a lot of what you can say fats on the toilet okay so uh, simply like that's that's also an example of malabsorption diarrhea Okay, so uh, now, uh, okay, uh, I will just scroll it down, just you guys should see, uh, this slide basically is a old slide, okay, and I'm more interested in telling you how to take history of diarrhea, okay, and how, like, uh, uh, what are the things to ask, right? And how to differentiate between infective as well as, as well as inflammatory diarrhea. Uh, okay, and here are a few terms like you know accompanying symptoms. You know tenesmus. 
uh, tedesmus is a feeling uh, um, when the person feels like you know there is incomplete emptying or you can say uh, once you have gone to the toilet and you have done defecation but when you will come out you still think that you know there is still the sensation that you know you need to defecate again that is called as that okay so anyhow uh, what I'm going to talk about is how to take the history of diarrhea, okay? Or how to differentiate different diarrhea, history of diarrhea. Okay, uh, of course, like, I will not talk about all the history because you have done, like, history-taking topic. But I have, like, my own way of taking history. Not my own way, but many people that follow some way, like, some, some mnemonics. Uh, one of the thing, like, I, like, whenever I take the history for pain, I always use a mnemonic. Maybe I told you guys called as um, Socrates, okay, so, uh, okay, and by this Socrates, or uh, I, I use one mnemonic called as Sotsara, you will find this mnemonic in many books, right, and by the way, I can, one of my way is, I can fix this mnemonic anywhere, one of the mnemonic maybe I told you is called as Odipara, Odipara means like onset, duration, progression, aggravating and relevant factors as well as associated symptoms. So, uh, Odipa is this Socrates, you can again fix it anywhere. Okay, so for example, in history of diarrhea, okay, <clears throat> you can, uh, you can, uh, what you can say, uh, ask about uh, uh, the, the symptoms, okay which are what you can say related with diarrhea. You can ask about onset. You can ask about um, characteristic, okay, or characteristics and relieving, relieving factor, okay, or factors, okay, or then what you can say um, associated uh, symptoms Timing, um, exacerbating, exacerbating factors, okay, like which increase and severity, okay. Uh, like th I'm, I'm just telling you. By the way, I don't use this one, right? But like I'm just telling you, you can use Socrates. Like what I told you, Socrates is used in many of the books to take the history of pain, and what I use is Sorsara, which is like quite close to this one. So. Many people, they use this one, right? Uh, this one for almost every symptom. So I told you this one as well. Like, by the way, if I will take the history for diarrhea, I will be going for with Odipara. Okay. Onset duration, duration progression. Onset uh, aggravating factors, relieving factors, as well as associated symptoms. Uh, guys, one very important thing I will tell you. Remember, when you are going to take history, and the history is about any fluid, like uh, vomiting, like uh, any pussy discharge, any discharge from any part of the body, about urine, about uh, stools, about anything, the, the secretions are involved. Uh, <coughs> three things, CCO, color, consistency, odor, color, consistency, odor. CCO, remember, CCO, color, consistency, odor. Okay, always ask about the color, always ask about the consistency, always ask about the odor. This thing we can be asked, okay. Now, when you will ask for the color, you would know that, okay, either it's bloody, either it's non-bloody, okay. So, like, uh, simply, look, just by asking this question, you will be having a very good idea either the patient has uh, some sort of blood uh, in the in the stools okay or or not so CCO is a very good good way to ask okay so whenever it is fluid you know we always ask for the color we always ask for the consistency we always ask for the odor we always ask about the quantity okay uh, and all these factors okay so um, <clears throat> 
uh, by the way guys there, there, are, there are many mnemonics for everything okay so in diarrhea uh, what are the questions I would be interesting in asking in the patient with the patient are uh, for example I will ask them uh, like when did it started okay like less than two weeks acute more than four weeks chronic I will ask about the onset characteristic color consistency odor uh, frequency timing severity aggravating relieving factors and all those things right so uh, <clears throat> now see <laughs> whenever it is infective okay whenever it is infective again like you know when you will study infectious disease you have to uh, go through again the topic of this diarrhea again okay so uh, whenever it is infective uh, by the way we can choose the slide in which there is two sections okay just to make the things easy so you can say I'm just talking about uh, inflammatory inflammatory or non inflammatory right I'm sure like until now you guys have done pathology so you must know what is inflammation and what is okay infection and all like you must be good in these things so simply uh, remember whenever there is inflammation uh, 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 always remember like there is some disruption of the intestinal mucosa okay and when there is no inflammation of course the mucosa is intact right so uh, remember whenever there is inflammation uh, or like here uh, we are going to talk about the inflammation inflammatory causes so remember there could be blood it could be bloody diarrhea and whenever it is non-inflammatory it is always non-blood non-bloody okay or you can say it will be watery instead right so this thing inflammatory causes give it give small volume stools the volume will not be so much large okay whereas uh, non-inflammatory give large volume of stools okay so like osmotic or secretory so imagine about cholera cholera people like you know if you have seen they they their stool volume is too much okay now inflammatory causes giving urgency urgency means like you have to rush to the washroom and tenesmus not always but it can give tenesmus okay inflammatory will give fever inflammatory can give shock and xyz many other things uh, non-inflammatory on the other hand you can see like it will be large volume there will be no blood rather it will be watery but there can be pain there can be cramps and of course both uh, okay non-inflammatory are having more chances to give dehydration okay like they, they give more or more more and more dehydration okay and of course like there are different lab diagnostics as well for the diarrhea but we are going to discuss them when we are going to study the labs okay so uh, now I was talking about the like I told you when you when you have to inquire any symptoms okay uh, what 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 are the things you must ask okay uh, regarding that thing like when it occurred how often or the things right but they of course like once you have inquired that thing then you will ask about many other things like if there is any travel history uh, if for example they have any taking any drugs so see uh, when we take the history of diarrhea so or you can say questions uh, to cover okay to cover to uh, look for the look for the etiology okay of diarrhea so always ask about the travel history okay always ask about uh, any outbreaks like cholera always ask about any seafood use uh, they are associated with a lot of infections uh, always ask about questions uh, to rule out um, uh, in inflammation okay inflammation causes always ask about family history okay always ask about antibiotics and 
uh, other medication for their use because it's not only anti antibiotics that give rather many other things can give okay always ask about the diet they take for example you know the babies if they are purely 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 taking some kind of juice you know juices uh, in pediatrics you are going to study one topic called as uh, toddler's diarrhea what happened like they keep on drinking juices and they had diarrhea so the diet plays an important role of course even in constipation the diet plays an important role so always cover these questions and always question, ask about the questions of for the diet yes always uh, ask for um, by the way if you if, if you are going to uh, inquire in the start that Socrates or whatever mnemonic odipara whatever you are using when you will inquire that of course you will catch this thing so steatotoria is what uh, when there is fats in the in the uh, stool and they have difficult to flush flats they have greasy stools okay uh, always ask about the weight loss because cancers can give diarrhea as well so they can lead to weight loss Al always ask their HIV status or either they are immunosuppressed like they are using any drugs okay so of course like immunosuppressed suppress, suppress people they can be checked when you are asking about other medications if they are taking any steroids or other drugs of course there can be uh, in the drugs of course laxatives can be should be asked okay so see a lot of questions we have to ask the patients okay uh, to look for the diarrhea and of course like uh, this one is like uh, we are talking uh, diarrhea from uh, physical of oh, sorry physical diagnosis point of view uh, we are not here to diagnose we like to talk about uh, what you can say the investigation or the causes in detail of course like for that you are going to cover that thing again in inter internal medicine and you are going to cover it uh, completely at that time but uh, in physical diagnostic point of view you know whenever we get any patient of diarrhea um, we go for uh, physical examination okay and when we go for physical examination guys remember see now I will tell you different points the most important thing to check is the signs of dehydration okay so this is the most 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 common important thing in diarrhea patients always check the signs of dehydration and then uh, signs to uh, find the cause of course like not always but for example in tumors in inflammatory bowel diseases there are many signs which we can see on the body okay so uh, in when we talk about the physical examination guys we are going to go in, into in the in the same way uh, we are going to check the general appearance of the patient and uh, in general appearance of course if the patient is drowsy it means he is highly dehydrated if the patient have toxic look it means it is infection if the patient is in coma or like maybe in dehydration they can be in coma uh, the patient can be lethargic by the way these are all the level of consciousness which is anyways our next topic of discussion so general appearance then we check the vitals in vitals what we check we check the blood pressure we check the temperatures we check the pulse we check the respiratory rate and now we check the blood when the someone is dehydrated of course their blood pressure will be decreased their pulse rate will be raised okay and all those things so check the vitals and then we go for the uh, general uh, physical examination which we start from the uh, hands and then we go to the face and then we go all the way down so uh, what are the things you must check to check to look for the signs of dehydration always check for the capillary uh, capillary uh, refilling time okay so what is this is for a CRT okay if we press the nail and we see like uh, when the you know when we you press the nail the nail become pale and when you leave it you know it becomes pink, pink again so we just notice the time how much time it takes for the nail to come become pink as well if it is taking more than three seconds of course like it means like the capital refilling time is increased and which means like there is dehydration so always check for the capillary refilling time um, and then always check the skin turgor okay uh, like we pinch the skin the skin and we see like how it either goes back quickly or it go back slowly or how it go back right so we can do this thing um, other than that uh, what are the thing you can check for uh, uh, what you can say other than the skin targa is uh, simply we check the mucous membranes okay uh, mucous membranes of the eyes okay uh, mucous membrane of the mouth uh, we see like either there is sunken eyes 
uh, of course, like the mucous membranes will be dry. Uh, we check in, in, in babies, we check the anterior uh, fontanelle, okay. And uh, <clears throat> what else we can check is, uh, we check the JVP, okay. Uh, and uh, like these are all the, all the things, you know, we check for the dehydration. And you can also auscultate, auscult, auscultate the chest, okay. Uh, of course, like there, there will be no abnormal finding, uh, rather like just like decreased heart sounds, like a little, uh, like <coughs> lower, low, low, low level of higher heart sounds, maybe you will have here. Okay, but like not always, not specific, okay. Basically, auscultation of chest is more important when you are looking for the signs of overhydration, okay. In, the, in that, you know, of course, the auscultation of chest is more important. Uh, so simply, uh, we, we do, we uh, simply, whenever any patient comes with diarrhea, you, we always do the examination. And in the examination, the most important thing is to look for the signs of dehydration. And then, of course, you will go for... Um, system specific examination like abdominal uh, for example examination or um, in case of IBDs maybe you will found the signs on the skin and other parts of the body of course like your your knowledge right now may be limited so you, you won't understand uh, like there is anterior UV itis and the different type of skin rashes can be present in different type of conditions which can give diarrhea so for example uh, see, when you are doing examination, you found someone pulse, pulse, pulses increase, their fever is increased, they look very thin, okay, and uh, they have like some eye movement problems. So, uh, see what I'm talking about. I'm talking about hyperthyroidism, like Graves disease, okay. So, like that's why examination is important. So, anyhow, guys, thank you so much for listening. That's all about diarrhea. See you in the next lecture.